Hillary Clinton sa naging desisyon, the U.S. President Barack Obama na kanselahin ang pulong nila ni Pangulong Rodrigo Duterte. Ay kay Clinton isang global issue ang usapin ng extrajudicial killings sa Pilipinas na dapat pag-usapan. Nararapan lang daw ang ginawa ni Obama matapos insultuhin ni Pangulong Duterte. With respect to the Philippines, President Obama made exactly the right choice. And clearly, the President was going to raise concerns that are global about what is going on in the Philippines uh, with extrajudicial killings of alleged uh, drug dealers uh, that uh, is now somewhere up near 2,000 killings. And when the uh, president of the Philippines insulted our president, it was appropriate in a very low-key way to say, sorry, no meaning. Samantala, tinawag naman ng Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump na terrible ang pagtratong natatanggap ngayon ni Obama. Pinula niya ang hindi paglatag ng red carpet stairway ng China nang dumating ang Air Force One. The U.S. President Obama sa G20 Summit sa China. At binanggit din ni Trump ang pagmumura ni Pangulong Duterte kay Obama. No, I am a president of a sovereign state. And we have long ceased to be a colony. I do not have any master except the Filipino people. Nobody but nobody. You must be respectful. Don't just throw away questions and statements. Putang ina mumurahin kita dyan sa forum na yan. Tell that to everybody. Ito mga kolumnista, para ba akong tinatakot? Anak ka na. Pumunta, umalis kayo dyan sa Pilipinas. Pumunta kayo doon sa Amerika. You, you, you write columns. I say, you're the lapdogs of this American. Who is it to confront me? As a matter of fact, he has to many. America has one to many to answer for the misdeeds in this country. Hanggang ngayon, hindi pa tayo nakatikin ng apology niyan. That is the reason why Mindanao continue or continues to boil. Sabi mo that was the last century. Young wounds na yan from generation to generation. As a matter of fact, we inherited this problem from the United States. Why? Because they invaded this country and made us their subjugated people. Everybody has a terrible record of extrajudicial killing. We make an issue about cra fighting crime. Nahingi na niya maubos-ubos niya sa Mexico border niya. Look at the human rights of America along that line. The way how they treat the migrants there. Masyado kayong bilib sa Amerika. Bumilib kayo dito sa atin, Amerika. Siya ang mag-explain sa akin kung bakit ganyang extrajudicial killing nila. Can he explain the 600,000 more massacred in this island? Do you want to see the pictures? Maybe I'll ask him. I'll make it public. We have a recorded history of that sordid period of our national life. Nobody but nobody can just sino ka? Eh, yung mga American Indians mo, sa sino lang, inubos mo eh. What about the rights of those guys who died in the past? Is it because it's just the past tense we do not answer for the present tense? You must be kidding. Stop joking yourself. Kayong mga sobra kabilib niyang who is you, Obama, to, to ask me that? I'll tell him, who are you? Tell him that. Telegraph mo ngayon. Hindi ako buta. Punta dito na pagka-ulila dyan sa mga. I want to ask you about uh, tomorrow, the next leg of your trip a little bit. And um, tomorrow you're going to be meeting for the first time with President Duterte. 
and he's a leader whose war on whose war on drugs has led to the death of about 2,400 people in just the last two months since he took office. And today, um, he said in a in a very colorful way that um, that you better not bring this up. And um, I'm wondering. Um, are you committed to raising this with President Duterte? And are you concerned that meeting him legitimizes um, his approach on this issue? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I just came out of uh, a long day of meetings, so uh, I just heard about some of this, but I have seen some of those colorful statements in the past. And uh, so clearly he's a colorful guy. Um, and what I've instructed my team to do is to uh, talk to their Philippine counterparts to find out uh, is this in fact uh, a time where we can have some constructive, productive conversations. Uh, obviously, uh, the Filipino people are some of our closest friends and allies, uh, and uh, the Philippines is a treaty ally of ours. Um, but I always want to make sure that if I'm having a meeting that it's actually productive and we're getting something done. Uh, we recognize the significant uh, burden that uh, the drug trade plays not just in the Philippines but around the world and fighting narco trafficking is tough. Uh, but we will always assert uh, the need to have due process and uh, to engage in that fight against drugs uh, in a way that's consistent with basic uh, international norms. Uh, and so uh, undoubtedly, uh, if and when we have a meeting, that this is something that's going to be uh, brought up. Uh, and my expectation, my hope is, is that uh, it could be dealt with constructively. Uh, but I'll have my team you know, uh, discuss this. I've got a whole bunch of folks that uh, I'm going to be meeting with over the course of the next several days. Um, and as I said, historically our relationship with the Philippines is one of our most uh, important, uh, and my relationship with the Philippine people has uh, been extraordinarily warm and uh, productive. So uh, I expect that will continue, but uh, I want to make sure that the setting is right and the timing is right for us to have uh, uh, the best conversation possible. Well, I'm, uh, no, I, as I said, I'm going to just make an assessment. I just got out of these meetings. What is certainly true is, is that um, you know, the issues of how we approach fighting crime and uh, drug trafficking uh, is a serious one for all of us, and we've got to do it the right way. Uh, the president said yesterday, you know, this wasn't going to affect our long-term relationship with the Philippines. But how is that the case if the president and the head of this other, our, our ally, are essentially in a, a war of words with each other? And the uh, the office of the Philippine leader said that the um, the decision to cancel the meeting was mutual. Is that the case, or did the U.S. basically inform them that this was not happening? Uh, well, look, first of all, um, the, the nature of our alliance with the Philippines uh, has been and remains rock solid. Uh, we have incredibly close working relationships uh, with the government of the Philippines on issues related to disaster response, uh, maritime security, um, diplomatic coordination on issues related to uh, the South China Sea, uh, economic, commercial, and people-to-people -people ties. Um, so uh, I think uh, people should certainly expect that our, our very close uh, working relationship with the Philippines is going to be enduring. <clears throat> and in fact, uh, we continue to uh, consult closely at a variety of levels. And in fact, I think Chairman Dumford has even been in the Philippines uh, recently, if not uh, today, uh, uh, for a Chiefs of Defense uh, meeting. Um, with respect to the bilateral meeting, uh, I think it was our judgment that given the focus of attention uh, on President Duterte's comments um, leading into 
uh, the, the meetings here. Um, we felt that that did not create a constructive environment uh, for a bilateral meeting. Uh, all of the attention, frankly, was on those comments um, and therefore uh, not on you know, the very uh, substantive agenda that we have with the Philippines. Um, so uh, again, given that focus, we felt that it wasn't the uh, right time to have uh, a bilateral meeting between the two presidents. Um, and that's something that we discussed with uh, uh, officials from the government of the Philippines um, uh, last night. Um, again, going forward, I would expect uh, our close cooperation to continue. Um, and, you know, where we also have differences, uh, we'll continue to uh, speak to those. And uh, as President Obama said, uh, for any country in the world, not just the Philippines, uh, we'll certainly support very robust uh, counter-narcotic efforts, but we also want to make sure that they're consistent with the rule of law and due process, and, and that too will be uh, a message that we continue to carry forward. Yang talaga. Maganda po sana ng pagkakataon na mapag-usapan nila yung mga issues at mga principles of common concern sa buong international community kahit itinataguyod pa rin natin yung ating independence sa anumang um, uh, maaring pakikialam ng uh, ibang mga bansa. So, sayang talaga. Umaasa na lang ako na magkakaroon pa sila ng ibang pagkakataon in the future na makapag-usap at uh, malay natin makabuo ng mga pagkakasundo at pagtutulungan sa iba't ibang mga isyu. Sa kabila ng aking panghihinayang, kaya sinabi ko sayang di sila makapag-usap ngayon, sana sa susunod ay uh, samantalahin yung ganyang uh, pagkakataon para ipagpatuloy at improve yung matagal ng relasyon uh, ng Pilipinas at ng Estados Unidos. Ganon din sa ibang mga bansa. Wala akong unsolicited advice para kay Presidente. Uh, nasabi ko na rin naman dati yung thoughts ko sa usaping iyan. Uh, basta sa ganitong mga international meetings sana, uh, sa ibang heads of state man o sa heads man ng mga uh, international bodies, ang pag-asa naman ng bawat isa natin mga Pilipino ay uh, sa pamamagitan ng ating chief executive ay maging mabunga yung ganyang mga pag-uusap nila at mag down sa benepisyo ng nating mga mamang. Well, I don't think it will I don't think it will affect the relationship between the two presidents or the two countries. I don't believe it will be a, a problem. Sa tingin ko, tuloy pa rin ang pagsasama po ng Estados Unidos at, uh, at ang Pilipinas laban, for example, sa terorismo, uh, laban sa drug uh, problem. Ang alam ko, yung uh, DEA, Drug Enforcement Agency ng Estados Unidos, ay palagi po nakikipag-ugnayan sa ating mga drug enforcement and PNP officials dito sa, sa bansa. So in terms of policy, I don't think one leader can, uh, can uh, change the friendship of two nations that we've had in the past 100 years. I don't think so. It transcends uh, the uh, incumbent leadership. Oh, hopefully, uh, maging close din po tayo sa susunod na Pangulo. <laughs>